All right, here we are. Game one between Navi and Team Spirit. We get on in to this winner bracket final between these two teams. And right away we get into the draft. We see Clockwork and CK picked up by Navi. And if you joined me yesterday, you know how important CK is to the side of Team Spirit. We saw Illidan not only do well with a CK, but shut down an anti-mage to the point where he had armlet and heart before the anti-mage <clears throat> even had battle fury that's that's disgusting that is that is a crazy amount of farm illidan probably looking to have it again unfortunately now picked up by navi that's going to be crystallizes hero and we've got clockwork for navi as well so right away you get a little thought in your head maybe the back of your head you're like are we going to see a sf mid get those early denies on the cogs get that advantage going in early Especially with a clockwork, very aggressive position for Hero. You run in with the battery assault, running with the cogs, and uh, especially with SF or even a CK. Reality Rift, Chaos Bolt. You run in and you just get a couple of kills. It's that simple. For the time, for the side of Team Spirit, Shadow Shaman and SK. Definitely a combination of a four or five that I really do like. You've got the lockdown of the shackles. Ether Shock early that does quite a bit of damage. Shadow Shaman base damage is already quite high. And then Sand King, he's your initiator. He's got Burrow Strike to work with. Uh, you know, you're going for that Blink Dagger as early as you can. With the, uh, you know, level 4 in the Burrow Strike, you have that long range initiation for the team to work with. So right away, Team Spirit. After that, Clockwork Pick getting into the second phase of bans. They ban out the SF. So no... Clockwork SF combination for Navi, but that's not the only combination that works for a mid hero with Clockwork. Clockwork is, you can just run at anybody. You get the right initiation, you walk in behind enemy lines, you get cogs locked in, it could work with anybody, so it's not a huge deal that SF's off the board. Maybe we see something a little bit different. Queen of Pain come out from Navi. They've also now banned the Death Prophet, so DP. And Shadow Fiend both banned out. That's uh, two mids banned out, as well as Tiny early from Navi. But Tiny also goes into the safe lane. And they're going to pick up Rubik. So this is going to be Roger on the clockwork. LeBron Dota standing in for Seneco on the Rubik. LeBron played out of his gourd yesterday. I mean, he, everything was perfect. Every initiation, every skill used seemed to be so perfect from LeBron Dota. I'm, I'm actually excited to see these two teams go up against each other because they played so well in their two games um, yesterday. We'll have to see you know, you know, who the better upper bracket team is. Is it Na'Vi? Is it Team Spirit? We're in game one. We're going to find out. It's a possible best of three series coming out here. But for Navi right now, I really do like uh, Clockwork as well as the Rubik. It's usually a good combination. You lift uh, whoever you're going at in, and you throw them down into the Clockwork, into the Cogs, and the Battery Assault. And if you're doing that with an aggressive tri lane, come with the CK. You can find yourself very early, very aggressive, get a couple of kills. Boost up that farm, the CK. Get that armlet as quickly as you can. And get those levels to work with that Phantasm. So Team Spirit, they pick up the Brewmaster in the offlane. Brew, very popular in the offlane right now. He's a lot of control. He's very tanky. Uh, he's an initiator of sorts with the Blink Thunderclap. Then straight into the Brew Split normally. Sometimes against the Clockwork, you can't get that Brew Split off with the Battery Assault coming out. And you're locked in the Cogs. But hopefully... For the side of Team Spirit, they won't have to deal with that. That's DK Phobos on the Brewmaster. I'm still yet to see DK Phobos on the Darkseer. Something I used to see a couple years ago when, uh, obviously, Darkseer was uh, a little bit more popular. I wanna be popular. Da -da 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 popular. A couple of heroes wanna be more popular, that's for sure. DK picked up. That is going to be a mid-DK. So right away you get uh, the thoughts of an initiator there. You get a Blink Dagger a little bit later into the item lineup for DK Blink Dragon Tail, or sometimes even a Shadow Blade. We'll see if they even do go to the Blink, just because of the fact that you've already got Reality Rift. So anybody you're going in on, get pulled in by Crystallize. Not too sure you do need that Blink 
Maybe you go for the Shadow Blade on DK, where you don't need that kind of long range initiation. Because you've also already got Clockwork with Hook. So, Team Spirit means that Sand King is for sure in the four spot, Brewmaster in the off lane. They need a mid and a safe laner. We'll see what they want to do mid up against this DK. And I, I was thinking Razor. I'm not too confident in myself. I was going to say Razor. You could, you could take my word for as much as it's worth, which is about nothing right now. Uh, but I was thinking Razor in my head. He's a good matchup against the DK. That link up on DK sends him back. You, you try to really take away as much form as you can. And I do like Razor when he has enough time to sap that damage. And that comes with the Shadow Shaman. That comes with the Sand King. Especially as a combination duo that they are. Uh, Shackles with the link on. As well as Sand King then following it up with a Burrow Strike. Or even the other way around. Burrow Strike into the link or Hex. You have a lot of time as a Razor. Sap that damage and start striking it to the side of Na'Vi. And I, I like Razor here. He's a very good pick. We'll see if he's mid. We'll see if he's safe lane. Obviously, that's very open for Team Spirit to figure out their lineup. And we could see him safe lane. Navi yet to pick their off laner. We'll see if Spirit feel more comfortable with Razor in the off uh, safe lane or mid lane. But unfortunately, I feel like their picks have to be more based on what they're going to feel more comfortable on. Just because Navi have the last pick. And you don't know that off laner yet. So last ban of OD, they are thinking that that Razor is going to be in the safe lane. It's really no surprise. But it's going to be mid, and they've got Terrorblade. Which I like. I like Terrorblade. He's one of those heroes that you never can count him out of a game. Obviously, we saw Terrorblade get shut down just the other day. Just yesterday, actually. And that comes due to the fact that, you know, sometimes Terrorblades can't really pick up that slack that you're expecting. Because I, I've seen Terrorblades come back from 5, 10, 15k thousand down. Um, but there are Terrorblades that do struggle when the team around them isn't as good. But you've got Razor, you've got Brew, and a lot to work with with your supports to the point where I feel like Terrorblade has the opportunity, if they were to fall behind, to really pull this game back. At any level, or even with a lead, just go straight through Navi. So let's see what Navi want to do in the off lane. They could still send the Clockwork there, pick up another four, maybe go for a Pudge or something, but I really doubt that. Clockwork's really been a staple of the four spot recently. So we'll see what they want to do in the off lane. Obviously, Tide, a big name there that's not banned out, still available for the side of Navi. Bat Rider's still up. They ban out the Tinker, maybe thinking, I would say that DK's in the off lane, which I've seen a couple times recently in Chinese Dota, so I wouldn't be too surprised to see that, honestly. And he's done well. Neo Phantom Lancer. Alright, so Clockwork, CK, Rubik, Dragonite, Phantom Lancer with... General in the offlane spot with Clockwork, mid Dendi on the DK, Crystallize on the Phantom Lancer, Rubik in the 5 spot played by LeBron, and Roger in the 4 with the CK. Interesting. And then Team Spirit, FNG on that 5 spot, Shadow Shaman, Fiver with the Sand King in the 4, offlane DK, Phobos, Brewmaster, Illidan safe lane with the Razor, and ILTW with the Terraboid. Very interesting. I don't know if they're going to swap. We'll see. I definitely wouldn't be surprised to see any swapping. That's why I... Let's, let's keep an eye on this. But no, it's going to be CK4, which... Honestly, you think about it, I kind of like it. You've got some pretty decent cores here for Na'Vi. All you need is the Chaos Bolt and the Reality Rift, and you're fine. That combined with a Rubik 
is a lot of lockdown for the side of Navi, and worst case scenario, Roger comes in and picks up the slack as a position four and tries to become a core later in the game. We've got four possible big time cores here for the side of Navi to the point where if you've got four well farmed cores against the Terrorblade, it might become a harder game for the Terrorblade and the side of Team Spirit, but we'll have to see how it comes out. So they've sent Illidan in to get this bottom bounty rune. He'll be over mid. I love to win. We'll be in the safe lane. So they, the two of them, they do swap spots as well. You see that with a couple of Chinese teams. Um, I know Flyby does it with Sakata every now and then. And they swap lanes, which is always nice to see. No aggression really from either side. Just grabbing these bounty runes and... We're really going to see each other. Two bounty runes apiece. So these lanes are going to set up Crystallize against DK Phobos. Looking to be a 1v1 for right now with where the supports are going. Uh, you've got Bibber coming over mid. FNG blocking the creep wave. Illidan, he's going to be on that mid razor. LeBron might be in a bad spot here. He's going to be found out by Bibber as well as FNG. They've got the Burrow Strike to start this off with the Shackle. Trying to run away. Plasma Field does hit twice at that longest range. And Illidan and Team Spirit, they get first blood quite easily. LeBron just getting caught out a little bit too far. And he doesn't even place a word. This is a dire ward over here. Gets no vision for the side of Navi. So Dendi against Illidan. First blood for Illidan. Might make this a little bit harder for Dendi with the DK. Over bottom. Burrow Strike comes through on a general. This creep waves behind the tier one for right now. FNG also coming over. You got to be careful. This is a strong combination of the Sand King as well as the Shadow Shaman. High uh, damage output from the Shadow Shaman. Shackles, Burrow Strike. So just the singular general for right now. He's going to take the lane by himself as over bottom. It's Crystallized Roger and LeBron Dota with the Telekinesis as well as the Chaos Bolt to line that up. We'll see how that goes for Navi against DK Phobos if he's able to get any farm. And over in the top lane, General's going to go down to Bibber. Roger's here. Two second Chaos Bolt, but he's only level one. Doesn't have anything to follow this up. Should be a kill and will be. Kind of just runs into the creeps there. Gets killed off. And now CK trying to come over is Roger. Not enough mana. For that Chaos Bolt to hit on Bibber. Get that lockdown to get Clockwork in here and involved. But they're still thinking about it. Bibber has no mana for a Burrow Strike. Only buys out on that Windway. It's just hoping that maybe he gets... Roger caught out with a little bit too much aggression. And there it is. Right into the shackles of FNG. Metamorphosis used. Chaos Bolt. Roger not looking to go down early right now. Bibber trying to get the mana for that Burrow Strike. Just about and... In range, it looks like he's a little bit too far, and he will be. Roger just walks away with that CK. Meanwhile, General Cogs, as well as the Battery Assault, just trying to kill off FNG. Still chases him down. No Metamorphosis anymore for the Terrorblade. Another kill here for Na'Vi. And that goes pretty perfectly for Na'Vi, as they don't lose Roger either. So, Na'Vi right away look to pull the game back, and they're even at two. And the thing about this is, ILTW wastes that metamorphosis. And, eh, you know, it's farm. It's not really wasted all too much. But right now, over in the top lane, again, they're going to go after General with the Burrow Strike coming through. Body box, very nice from Biver. But that'll just send back General. And he's got that salve to work with after Caustic Finale is said and done. So with no metamorphosis on ILTW, you don't really have to worry too heavily on going down. At least for the next two minutes or so. Uh, he's able to probably just sit here, get experience, and has to worry about Biver and the Shadow Shaman being here, but with no vision on FNG, he should think he's safe. Goes in a little bit too deep. He's got two heroes locked in the cogs with the battery assault rolling off. Roger's now here with the Chaos Bolt and the Reality Rift going after ILTW. There's the Telekinesis. He throws him right into this terrible lead. One more shot would have gotten the kill, but they don't have enough, and everybody from Team Spirit is able to make it back to that Tier 1. That combination of the Rubik as well as Roger on the CK... Already showing their strengths. Showing how, how hard they can work to get these kills. They're just a little bit short on that one. But Reality Rift early with the CK is that minus armor. And they're going to go in again with the Battery Assault. Reality Rift into the Telekinesis. Jackal's on a general under the Tier 1 tower. 
But the aggro is taken by the creeps for right now. The cogs in. FNG is going to fall 3-2 in favor of Na'Vi early. And this is just a bloodbath right now in the top lane. So they're still looking to get this kill on Biver. Not enough mana for that Burrow Strike right into the hands of General. Just hitting him with Caustic Finale. Burrow Strike finally comes. Not dead as General. Making some space for himself. Still walking away. And this is space. You've got three heroes chasing you. And nobody trying to stop ILTW getting that free farm over top. This is perfect. So we'll see how well D, uh, CK as well as this uh, Rubik works out for them. We've got Telekinesis now with the Fatal Bolt. Level 2 is LeBron. And Roger, when he hits that level 3, we'll see how effective he is going after these cores on the side of Team Skirt. Over mid, Shackles come through on a Dendi. The Static Link is there. Illidan is still in over 100 damage. General going to run at FNG. The Plasma Field comes out. Dendi's got to run back. He's very low. But with the Cogs, the Battery Assault, and the Chaos Bolt, Roger gets the kill. Dendi and crew turn it around on... Team Spirit to get that kill. So LeBron is just subbing in for today. Or actually he subbed in yesterday too. So not just today. I'm lying already. I'm sorry. But uh, he's, he's done quite well. He looks pretty good with uh, Navi. Very, very in seam. Meshed well. If they could kill off this terrible eight early with Roger and LeBron... That's going to be very beneficial for Navi. They placed that ward over. Over DK Phobos. Saw a big chunk of life go away. And they're going to go for this. Roger behind him. Chaos Bolt, two seconds. Battery Assault. Cogs are going to come in eventually. Not just yet, as they've got the Telekinesis right into the Cogs. Down you will go, Terrorblade. General will get credit for that kill. And they're shutting down this Terrorblade quite well right now. They get that kill. He's not first on in terms of the CS. Meanwhile, over bottom, Crystallize is doing very well at 36 and 19, just six minutes in. And you see how strong CK is now in this four position. We'll see if this becomes more of a thing. Pro strike through should be Shackles. ILTW might, might end up getting a kill here on Roger, especially with the rotation of Illidan. They'll not only get one kill, they'll find two as LeBron goes down as well. One to Illidan and one to FNG. And that was perfect from... FNG, they could have just focused one, going for the shackles on to Roger, but instead throwing those shackles out on LeBron, keeping two heroes around as they had the Pearl Strike come out from Biver, and they had enough damage with the Odin rotation to get two kills. Well played there by Team Spirit. Crystallize under this tier one, having to watch out is DK Phobos. Phase boots here for general. Level seven for Crystallize. See how quickly he gets into that diffusal blade here for Dendi on the Dragonite. Power treads. Expect the SNY soon. Or not soon, but next. It'll be interesting to see what the CK build is in this 4 position. They're definitely thinking about going in on Illidan. As they're going under this tier 1, the rotation from Biver already. Now you gotta realize that you gotta get back to Burrow Strike is out. Roger looking very dead as the Static Link is stealing 49 damage and they keep him in place with the Burrow Strike. It's a gank gone wrong. Meanwhile, top FNG falls to General who is now found himself... A bunch of kills here. As he's 3 1 and 3. Oof, FNG 1 5 and 3. He is all 5, or 5 out of the 6 deaths over on the side of Spirit, over bottom. DK Phobos goes down to crystallize in the crew of Roger as well as LeBron. Dota, they use that telekinesis as well as the Reality Rift and Fade Bolt. Throw a Spirit Lance in there, and all of a sudden, crystallize is overwhelming you. And General with another kill this time on Biver. So 8 to 5 in favor of Navi. General just runs at these heroes. He just doesn't care. Guys, I have battery assault. I'm a clockwork. And I'm going to run right in your face. He also used hookshot there. So I guess that's not exactly the full case. But he gets himself another kill. He's already 4 1 and 3. This is a clockwork getting ahead early. Looking for the drums. Has hookshot and the initiation already there for Navi. 8 minutes. Just about 9 minutes in. They already have hookshot to work with. On the side of 
team spirit in terms of the brewmaster he's not even level six yet no level five for biver shadow shaman only level three the experience difference is not too substantial but you have, you have hookshot to work with in 17 seconds expect navi to be aggressive with roger and lebron dota in this top lane once again when that is back up Burrow strike hits, Metamorphosis used, General running away, Battery Assault just trying to make some space into the trees, still alive for now, but they spotted him, and they will get the kill, ILTW will clean up General, getting that four times kill streak, and yep, Gen General, you should immediately regret that decision, DK Pro was going down, it's like the first kill I think I've missed, probably the second. But that's in combination with Roger, 2-2 on the Chaos Bolt Reality Rift. There with Crystal Eyes, level 9, farming very well. Now going for that Diffusal Blade. Rotation bottom again by DK Fobo. Still yet to hit that level 6. With this Creep Wave, he should hit level 6. And it's a long time coming. And General dead again. I don't want to move because I feel like I'm going to miss a kill here with the Chaos Bolt for 3 seconds. The Reality Rift, the Bruce Split finally comes, but it's not going to be in time. Crystal Eyes finally locked in as the Stone does come out on him from this Brew. They're chasing on to Roger. Stone thrown again on this CK, but he's level 5, and really this brew not doing much of anything. So I catch that kill. A little bit of T-Tours, though. Brew again. He's getting low. Crystallized. Roger, both here. Biver to try to save the day. The Burrow Strike comes out on a Crystallized. Now the Shackle. Reality Rift for the Minus Armor on DK Fobos. Still trying to chase him. Chaos Bolt gets the kill. Crystallized in a lot of trouble. Not enough mana for the Doppelganger. And it's also on cooldown. Now they're going to get themselves a second. Illidan with the double kill on Crystallized. And Roger now level 10. And the Akua as well as the Drums and Phase Boots. Illidan very quick. As well as very strong this early on. In front of Dendi by... A level in, in terms of net worth, about 600 gold. Pearl Strike comes out on Dendi. Got the Rocket Flare as well as Roger looking for Chaos Bolt just out of range, but they're still looking to work. General hits the hook shot. There's the Chaos Bolt on top, but avoided thanks to the Sandstorm right into the Reality Rift, and they'll get the kill. Dendi's going to pick up that one, and it's now 12 to 9 in favor of Navi. Let's see. That was a smoke. I heard that come out. Three-man smoke coming out from Navi, Dendi, Roger, as well as LeBron, Dota, that heavy control. They want to look for ILTW. General showing in the top lane. Meanwhile, FNG getting low to Crystallize. DK Fobo's trying to chase. The pings are out. Crystallize all by himself. Take another look over top. Got this smoke, but they're not going to find anything as these heroes, ILTW's in the jungle and rotating back over mid is going to be Illidan. They still are smoked up. Level 6 is Roger. Has the Phantasm. And LeBron Dota is level 6 as well. If they could find ILTW, they might be able to get this kill. Coming over is the Terrorblade as well as the Sand King. They find him. I don't know if they saw Bibber just yet. They're going to steal the Sandstorm. Burrow Strike hits on 2 with the Phantasm already used by Roger. There's the Metamorphosis by ILTW. FNG coming as well as DK Phobos. The Rocket Flare hits. Got to try and run in the Sandstorm is LeBron. Thunderclap will come through. They just don't have the kill yet. And the Burrow Strike hits again on Roger with the Metamorphosis. They'll have the kill. Trying to get to the low ground is Roger with the, the rea Reality Rift, but not enough. And the Elder Dragon form is Dendi. They've also got the Serpent Words placed down by Team Spirit. Burrow Strike comes on a General. In a lot of trouble. The Battery Assault as well as the Cogs locks in this Biver Sand King. They'll get the kill on three. DK Phobos and FNG going down thanks to the help of LeBron. And now it's just ILTW up here. And farming up these Serpent Words will be Dendi. Easily cleaned up. A nice chunk of farm going his way. And it turns into a net win, I'd say, for the side of Navi. Also thinking still to go in on ILTW. We've got Ether Shock level 3 picked up on this Rubik. Roger again, level 6. The Reality Rift is good early initiation for them. We'll see if Dendi goes SNY, maybe a Blink Dagger after, after but he's picked up the Armlet for now. Then you take a look over at Crystallize. Still going for that Diffusal Blade farming. And these are fights that don't involve Crystallize just yet. Illidan's been fighting as well as the Terrorblade ILTW. But this is yet to be with Crystallize. And I feel like Na'Vi, they're winning these fights without him. 
just going to go a step further when he does join the fight. Smoke used by Team Spirit. They've got three heroes here. FNG, Biver, as well as Illidan. So the Shackle, Burrow Strike, all here for them, as well as the Epicenter. Level 6 is this SK. They will go for mid, go for general. There's the drums. Burrow Strike's not going to hit. Getting away already is general. And Burrow Strike's a little bit short from Biver, and that smoke's going to fizzle. So now they know that three heroes are here. They'll send Crystal Eyes over with the illusions. The hookshot comes out, but that's not going to hit on anything important. They now look over at Biver. He's going to avoid that Spirit Lance with the Sandstorm. General still chasing. But the Burrow Strike to the low ground, as well as the Haze picked up by Odin. Now Team Spirit might be the ones turning this around and looking for a chase again. Plasma Field thrown out. The Rock Flare spots them. They, they got to turn around with the knowledge here for Navi. They could take this fight very well. That's exactly what they do. They thought about going in with the haste on the Illidan, but that's a risky maneuver going in 4v5. So let's see. Item progression-wise, Terrorblade, top of the net worth, going for the Manta style, and then the Butterfly has the Dragon Lance to work with. Level 12 as well. So two in Sunder, four in the Metamorphosis, four in the Conjure Image, and one in the Reflection. And terribly, we saw with that Metamorphosis does hit very hard, but we'll see if he's able to get locked in by this position for CK. And with that Reality Rift in the Chaos Bolt, it's a big lockdown for Na'Vi. They can work with a good initiation range with the level 3 on the Reality Rift. There's the Chaos Bolt. Thunderclap hits on Roger. Roger now in a little bit of trouble as the Bruce comes out, but he avoids that stone throw. With the Phantasm, I don't think that's going to keep him alive. Na'Vi not exactly going in just yet. And that is a stolen Burrow Strike. They'll give up the life of Roger. General nearby. The Reality Rift again, but that's not going to do much of anything. Na'Vi have abandoned ship on their position for CK. Sending Crystal Eyes over top to finish off this Diffusal Blade. And the rest of the team continuing to farm elsewhere. It's going to be Shadow Blade on DK. And Illidan finds LeBron. Burrow Strike away. Plasma Field hits twice. And one more shot from Illidan. 52 stolen damage puts him at 198. Take a look again. This is going to be Cox coming through into the Serpent Ward. Doppelganger used by Crystallize, but they have the rotation of Illidan. They're trying to chase, and General, with Eye of the Storm on him and Illidan chasing in, looked as though he was going to go down, but Crystallize sewing him up with that Spirit Lance gets General out safely, and Navi able to retreat successfully. You talk about how close this game is, and, and it's... It's been very close the entire time. No net worth lead over a thousand, except for this little mark right here. So I guess you could call me a liar with sufficient evidence. But this is a Terrorblade who hasn't fought too often, going for the Manta style, then the Butterfly. And sometimes you see Terrorblades fall behind and they're able to bring the game back. But when they're close in net worth, when they're leading the game, you can see a Terrorblade really all of a sudden. It goes from even a net worth to like five, ten thousand in their favor they take a fight they push really quickly with the terrible the team they've got around the terrible as well is doing quite well illidan here with the yasha third on the net worth only 300 behind dendy crystallized very slow on getting this defusal finally finishing it now going for a manta style of his own so this might be the point where navi look to fight try to take a lead of their own if they could find iltw slow down that farm that would be the best spot for Navi to be in. Unfortunately, that smoke's not going to find anything. And ILTW able to avoid the side of Navi. So Dendi grabs that Shadow Blade with the armlet. And still Navi. Sitting over bottom while LTW and Illidan are looking to push this tower over mid. They send the rotation of Dendi back. Maybe they're looking to initiate on Illidan. They send two heroes here with Roger in general. They're probably going to look for the hookshot. Shadow Blade by Dendi. They're actually in the Roshan pit for now. Metamorphosis used by ILTW. Rocket Flare comes out. It spots them, but it's a double damage on the Terror Blade. I don't know if they want to go in on this with Serpent Wards dropped. They're definitely going to risk it if they find an open opportunity. They steal Serpent Wards from FNG. That's pretty big in this fight. There's going to be the Elder Dragon form. The Telekinesis on Illidan, as well as the Chaos Bolt on ILTW. Is he going to go down in time? The Hookshot comes through, and they take out this Terrible Lead. Epicenter comes through on a Roger, but it's not going to be enough damage just yet. They'll also take out Illidan with Dendi. They continue to chase onto this Sand King and get the kill. Four dead already, and the Bruce Split only keeping Brew alive to try and get this kill on Roger. I'm not sure it's going to be enough. 
and they will take one of their own. Brew able to walk away as the Serpent Words place for the side of Navi, as well as them getting this first Aegis. So that is a fight that goes perfectly, not allowing ILTW to get off that Sunder in Metamorphosis form, not being able to get back to full health. And Navi, they now have the Aegis to work with, open up the map a little bit more, get that farm, work towards then those next items, and maybe look to push. General landed that late hook shot from point blank distance. He still hit it. Onto the terribly, keeping him stunned up after the Chaos Bolt was thrown by Roger. And only two seconds, but that was enough time to lock down ILTW, get that damage with the help of Dendi to just win that fight and then take their prize, which was the Aegis. So with that win, that'll be Yasha coming out. For this crystallized PL. He's just pretty much been farming the whole time. That was the first fight he was really involved in. And look over at DK Phobos again. He doesn't have that Bruce split for another 60 seconds. Nor does he really have the mana to sustain anything. Roger level 9, 4 in the Chaos Bolt, 4 in the Reality Rift. And he's just able to blink away. What does LeBron have right now? Mass Serpent Wards. So Aegis, Serpent Wards of their own. Wouldn't be surprised to see them look for a push on the side of Navi or even look for another fight. Blade Mail coming out next for the Clockwork. LeBron, Dota, just with the Arcane Boots. Pretty simple. Not 700 net worth like the Shadow Shaman on the side of Team Spirit. That's something to be proud about. Now Dendi and Crystal Eyes will take this bottom tier one. Might even look to push more as they, again, do have those Serpent Wars to work with. So, tier 2 da tower down already to half health. Are they going to hold these Serpent Wards and go for a tier 3 with the Aegis? That's exactly their plan. They're going in heavy. They're going in aggressive. They want to make sure this terribly doesn't have enough time to farm. There's the Serpent Wards placed down. Pearl Strike hits on a Dendi, but the hook shot from General into the base. Bivir in a lot of trouble. Yes, the Sandstorm, but the Telekinesis comes through. They'll get the kill. The Bruce with Dendi. He's getting quite low. He doesn't have that Aegis. There's going to be the, the stun on him again. Crystallize now running away from Bivir, who's bought back. Hits that Burrow Strike. Hits and breaks that Aegis. Roger going to TP through, and Crystallize in a lot of trouble as he's hexed up by FNG. Doppelganger to try and run away. Maybe get a kill on the on this Shadow Shaman before he goes down, but FNG gets the kill. They'll take out Crystal Eyes. They'll take out this Rubik of LeBron Dota as well as hold that Tier 3. Serpent Wards do a lot of damage here with the rest of Na'Vi, almost opening up the Shrines and the base, but played very well by Team Spirit to hold, and they even this game back up, pop the Aegis, and kill Crystal Eyes twice. So Team Spirit... They don't want this game to end that quickly because of the sheer fact that they want this Terrorblade to farm up even more. He's very close to the net worth of Dendi. At some point, will probably pull away. With the Butterfly, these fights are going to get a little bit harder for Navi, and he's getting closer and closer to finishing off that item. For Illidan, it's that Yasha into the BKB, which not having that in that last fight, he still did quite well. Seemed a little bit sloppy from the side of Navi. Over mid with the epicenter hitting down. The Telkinis is going to come through onto the brew. They'll slam him down. They look for the kill on DK Phobos, but now they lose Dendi, and the chase is on from Team Spirit. Battery assault used by General just to walk away, and Biver again finding these perfect burrow strikes into the epicenter, really helping out his team. It's not one-man burrow strikes. It's almost seemingly always two- or three-man burrow strikes, and when you have initiation like that with the Blink Dagger from the SK to follow that up with Ether Shock, Hex, and Shackles, it just seems to go Team Spirit's way very easily. So Roger on this CK support, going for the Solar Crest, still wants that minus armor in conjunction with the Reality Rift. And Crystallize still finishing off that Manta style, and then the Heart. Thunderclap through split again. 
They blocked him in long enough. Roger in a lot of trouble. The rest of the team is here. There's the Spirit Lance on ILTW. Roger's still alive. The Chaos Bolt hits on the Brewmaster, but now they got to try and chase. Cycloned up his crystallized doppelganger trying to get away. Pearl Strike through over onto the Rubik. LeBron Dota getting low with the Sandstorm. They've got Dendi here. The Token East is out on the DK. Let's see if they can turn around with the BKD being popped by Illidan. He's trying to get these kills on a Navi. He's got the Static Link. The Pearl Strike again on a two. General, he's going to fall inside the cogs with the Blade Mail. It doesn't really matter with the BKB pop by Illidan, and they'll take out two again on the side of Team Spirit and lose just one. This is Team Spirit continuing to push. This is Terrorblade and Razor hitting their power spike. And they're going to push very heavily as Terrorblade still has that metamorphosis to work with. He's got that metamorphosis finishing the Manta, working on the Scotty. Only 1,100 gold away from it. Four staff next here for Sand King. DK Phobos has the Blink Dagger. Vlad's He's going for the AC. And then the Ags. And it'll probably be Ags with the minus 65 second primal split cooldown. Let's see. Are they going to be able to defend this tier 2? Are they even going to try to defend this tier 2 with a Metamorphosis up on ILTW? Here comes Roger with the Phantasm used. They look for DK Phobos. He's already able to blink out. And this is Team Spirit getting away, taking that tier 2, and now up 3,000 net worth. So now Terrorblade's got a lead to work with. Almost a Scotty. You see how strong the Terrorblade is, and really the Razor with him. It's only a 9 second BKB. This is also some good supporting from FNG as well as Bibber. You may be lowest on the net worth, but FNG has been having a field day right now. As well as Bibber, who is above that position for CK. Every Blink Burrow Strike has been on point. Every Blink Burrow Strike has hit multiple heroes. And Team Spirit take advantage of that and clean up Na'Vi time and time again. They may be behind in kills, but it's looking very good for Team Spirit. They might be waiting, working with that Aegis next, but I take a look over mid. FNG goes down to Crystallize. The BKB is popped by Illidan. They're still looking for the chase. These illusions will get him quite low, as well as DK Phobos. And all of a sudden, two kills go the way of Na'Vi over Team Spirit. They get caught out a little bit over mid. So SNY finished off for the Razor. Crystallize here. Finishing off the Manta style, going for the heart. Dendi with the Shadow Blade as well as that armlet. AC next. And I think AC finished. We'll see if it's BKB next for Dendi. Shadow Blade used by Dendi. They look over at the tier 3. Just want to finish off this tower. Epicenter is... Very preemptive. That is very preemptive. Over here. You shook some some ground and and that was it. I don't know if I don't know if Navi know about this, but that's decently big for the side of Team Spirit to no longer have that epicenter. That was an NA epicenter of sorts. This is the matchup I really wanted it to be after the exciting matchup between Gambit and Spirit yesterday and Navi and Vega. These two teams coming together. It looks as though this is going to be a nice best of three. 27 minutes into this first game, Rocket Flare comes out. Not sure if it spotted Fever, FNG, as, I, I, and well, as well as the rest of the team. All five here for Team Spirit. Stealing that Plasma Field. Not bad to steal. All the while, Roger pushing with that Phantasm. Just trying to get that tier 2. Now coming over is the rest of the team. There's the Blink Thunderclap. Roger caught way out. Burrow Strike hits, and that's an easy kill for Navi. But on the back lines, let's take a look. Going to be Dragon Tailed up is this FNG Shadow Shaman. And now the chase is on from Illidan. He's got that Static Link as well as the BKB. DK Phobos with a double kill. They'll also take out the Rubik. But BKB down for the side of Team Spirit's Razor. Metamorphs is still up. And they look to rotate towards Roshan, but that's not up for another minute. So 
two supports down for a lowering of the BKB by a second. Now down to seven seconds. I'm not sure Navi are okay with that, but silver linings are everything, and that's one of them. So now Dandy going in the BKB. I think this is going to be very crucial to the team fights that Navi are going to have coming in later with a late 10 second BKB against the 7 second BKB of Illidan. Very important uh, in these later team fights. Zyle GW going for the Butterfly has finished off the Dragon Lance of Manta as well as the Scotty. And Team Spirit, they've been pressuring for quite some time ever since Navi walked away from that bottom tier 3 in that botched epicenter. Want to keep the pressure on a Navi, maybe open up this Roshan as it's coming up in just a moment, seven seconds. And they've been sticking around this Roshan pit for quite some time. Again, continuing to push back Navi into their base on their side of the river because they want to get this next Aegis and Cheese. It's very important for them to take these next fights and as well as be able to confidently enough push. Smoke? Smoke? No smoke. There's the rocket flare from General. Navi continuing to farm up. Roger now with the Solar Crest and the Force Staff. Take a look over at Crystal Eyes working on that heart. And in terms of buyback status, it's only there for Dendi and the Terrorblade. So a fight could be detrimental to both sides. Seeing as uh, both teams really do have some pretty decent pushing power. So let's see. Both teams by the mid half of this river. Biver thinking about going in. Rocket Flare spots him. Roshan available. Aegis and Cheese. Meanwhile, Dendi just farming up, pushing away. Needs this BKB coming into the next fight. That's exactly what they're waiting for. But Team Spirit, they're not going to wait. They're going to go into the Roshan pit with the double damage out on Illidan. Going to be spotted by General. Serpent Words placed again. The last time we saw this, we know that Navi took the fight. They are setting up around the pit. Illusions being sent in by Crystal Eyes. My LTW all by himself. I really want to watch General getting ready to go in on this fight. The hookshot's going to be very crucial to going in. The telekinesis on a Biver. He's going to be stunned up again with a four second chaos bolt. They look to get this kill. Stop the barrel strike from coming in. The BKB pop by Illidan, and he's going to start to chase. But Dendi, see what the amount of damage they have. They'll take out two. It's the Aegis on ILTW as well as the Metamorphosis. He's going to try and kill off Crystal Eyes. So as the doppelganger avoided the damage that's coming out from this terribly. They'll take out a third. The barrel strike stolen by Rubik. They'll get him locked in and they'll take out that Aegis. Everybody down on the side of Team Spirit. They look for this. <laughs> Terrorblade once again. He doesn't have metamorphosis. Everybody here from Navi, we lift you up. We throw you down. We get the kill. And Navi with a full team wipe, losing absolutely nothing on their end. And this is huge. They have buyback on Illidan as well as ILTW. But that is it. And the push will come through from Navi once again. That is a perfect fight once more. They find that huge support of Biver to take him out. No burrow strikes, no stuns, nothing to lock in the side of Navi after that. Except for shackles, but you come in close with a Shadow Shaman, especially against the damage that Na'Vi have. You're not going to last long, and that was exactly the case as FNG went down soon after. But go after the Tier 3s. They already took down the Tier 3 bottom. They should be able to get at least the tower and a set of racks. And I doubt the side of Team Spirit are looking to buy back on that terribly. The heart now finished for Crystallize. They take the racks, they back off. Now Navi with a comfortable 8,000 8, net worth lead. Wow. Very well done from Navi to take these fights around the Roche pit. That's the second time around the Roshan pit that they've gotten themselves a nice fight, won these teams fight, team fights successfully. And it pays off in huge dividends. And he was debuting that 10 second BKB. Very crucial to that team fight. Now going for the MKB. We take a look over at Crystal Eyes. He's going for an MKB as well. As the butterfly is being built and almost finished here for the Terrible Eight, just 500 gold away. So Spirit kind of want to slow down this game, farm as much as they can. 
We'd like to have buyback on a big chunk of these heroes, and we see that only Terrorblade as well as the Sand King have it, but that's a buyout on the Butterfly. So they need to be very careful coming in these next couple of minutes. As long as ILTW doesn't have buyback, their base is very susceptible, and the game is very susceptible to them just losing. I think Navi kind of get a whiff of this. They know that. They know they could be aggressive. They seem to be setting up together, maybe looking for a smoke. That's exactly what LeBron Dota has ready for them to go in. The Arcane Boots come through, and... In just a moment, we should be seeing it. Come on, don't make me look stupid, guys. They've let ILTW farm back. Just about into buyback status. MKB finished here for Dendi. And Team Spirit staying very close together, knowing that they, they do think that Navi is going to be very aggressive. Illidan going for that Ag still. Butterfly finished. BKB next for Terrorblade. Very crucial right now. And Navi know that. They got to respect the team fight of Team Spirit. We've seen it a couple times where Terrorblade just cleans up. I feel like if he's able to get this BKB, it's going to be even more of a possibility for Team Spirit to win these next couple of fights. Just as Dendi showed it in the last exchange. Having that 10 second BKB was very crucial to that team fight. Not able to be locked down. And they end up winning the fight, coming over towards bottom. They might find a couple of these heroes on the side of Team Spirit. Load in here with ILTW as well as Biver. They might look for the blink. Shadow Blade used here by Dendi. They have the Solar Crest on him. They find Biver. There's the Telekinesis with the Dragon Tail. They'll take out one general with the big hook shot with the Reality Rift coming through. They'll take a second on the back lines, but push away from these cogs. ILTW with the Metamorphosis used. The buyback comes out from Illidan as well as Biver on the Sand King. They start to work, but Dendi's got himself a double kill, taking out the Brew. There's a three second Chaos Bolt to lock in ILTW even more. The Shackles on the LeBron Dota. They'll take the loss in just this Rubik. But Biver looking for blood. He smells more of the Dragon Tail. The damage from Dendi. Triple kill for him. BKB pop from Illidan. Crystallize just trying to do work. His general is going to drop. And ILTW as well as FNG are here with Illidan. Shadowblade used by Dendi just trying to run away. And he's going to make his way out. And it ends up being a 3-4-2. So nice exchange for Navi. They don't lose their, uh, they don't lose their Phantom Lancer or their Dragonite. And immediately look to push over these center racks over bottom as they've already taken out this tier 3. But now this is BKB on ILTW. But unfortunately for Team Spirit, Metamorphs is down for 100 more seconds. So if the pressure were to come from Na'Vi, despite having that BKB, it might be a little bit tough for them to hold. They really do rely on that heavy cooldown. Just see the kind of damage that Dendi is outputting right now. MKB, Shadowblade, BKB now down to 8 seconds. But you compare that to the Illidan BKB of 5 seconds. Which he got very early into this game. Vlad's picked up here by Roger. We take a look over at General who has that 4 staff as well as the late mail. We'll see if he goes for Ags at some point. The hook shots have been very key to the, the winning of Na'Vi. Or the winning of these fights for Na'Vi. And ILTW going for the Bloodthorn next. Crystallize, Heart, MKB, Diffusal, Butterfly for him coming out next. And Team Spirit. And they look to be setting up for a smoke as well. We really want to fight into the side of Na'Vi once Metamorphosis is available in 15 seconds. And they'll have that 10 second BKB to work with. But Na'Vi, they want to be aggressive once again. They have the smoke in Viz Rune. That'll be picked up by General. 
Team Spirit yet to go for their smoke, yet to be on their aggressive side. They're sitting together here, back in the same spot where that last fight just took place. Coming across this mid lane will be the side of Na'Vi. He spots them all, but they have the Sentry Ward. The Burl Strike comes through, but Chris Wise not going to be hit. This is going to be the Serpent Ward thrown down by FNG, but he's already killed off by Chris Wise. And he's getting very low with the BKB. I don't know if he's able to make it out of this. He's trying to armor toggle. He just gets blocked by General. He's taken out the Epicenter on top of the side of the Na'Vi. They're already taken out, too. They've taken out this Razor, and now they look for more. Roger trying to get away. Meanwhile, the Hookshot comes out on Biver from General, just trying to lock in the Sand King for as long as he can. ILTW with the Metamorphosis. He's trying to kill off Chris Wise with the Doppelganger to avoid this damage for now. There's too many illusions. Who do you go after? It's going to be ILTW trying to get himself out with a four second Chaos Bolt comes through and they lose the terribly. They lose everything on the side of Team Spirit. GG is called by Team Spirit and Na'Vi take game one. It ends just like that. Na'Vi. Throwing the pressure on, the BKB doesn't even matter for Terrorblade. They lose everything. Perfect fight again from Na'Vi despite losing Dendi. And game one goes their way. Very close. 40 minute exchange between these two teams. And it was a barn burner into the end. Take a look. Na'Vi 11, 2 and 12 for Crystallize. 13, 2 and 6 for Dendi. Just two cores going off. That position for CK. I mean, that four-second Chaos Bolt at the end onto the Terrorblade ends up working in their favor. And General was on point. 7-6-21. That early game was so good for him. I think he got five kills in the first 15 and 21 assists. Landing those hook shots, always on point. And Navi take game one. We'll be back with game two in just a moment. I'm your caster, Bcop, at Bcop92 on Twitter, as well as Bcop casting on Twitch. Follow me in all places to know when I'm casting next. We'll be back with Game 2 in just a moment. I hope you guys enjoyed Game 1. Let me know how I'm doing in the chat. I'll be taking a look. And, uh, yeah, again, we'll be back in just a moment.